Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I want to demonstrate how to create a feature, probably going to say this wrong, uh, a ferrule, which is a ring feature that can be formed in a plate and then you can weld on sanitary tube or different types of things. You see it a lot in like dairy processing, etc. So just to give you a frame of reference, it's this ring that gets formed. Now I'm showing fillets, but if you've looked at my AU class, you know I really don't like to add fillets <laughs> unless they're really needed because they don't flatten anyway. And the forming the feature was fine, but they were struggling to find a way to show the proper sizing in the flat pattern because of course this feature doesn't flatten. So one of the solutions I had was to create a secondary sketch. So I'm going to walk you through that process as a method for taking a shape and giving a representative flat pattern that you can use for cutting. So I've already kind of started a part here and you want to make sure that you set up this plate big enough. So this is an 18 by 18 and I'm also creating some parameters ahead of time. So I've already taken the time to define it. Now I'm defining mine by the hole, that would be the inside diameter. So that's the hole size we want. I'm determining the height of the ring. And this is where there's a number of different ways this could be done. But I'm uh, taking into account the bend deductions, etc., that <clears throat> will occur so that we know that when we form this half inch ring, there's gonna be some uh, material stretching, etc. And so I'm just arbitrarily picking 35 thousandths so per the height so since that we are going to form this ring shape from a flat there's actually going to be two of those so what i'm doing to calculate the hole diameter is <clears throat> I'm, or, or the final flat hole diameter is taking the hole diameter and i'm subtracting twice the ring height and that deduction so that's going to be our final size. There's a number of ways that could be done. We could also handle this in a more table format in the I feature. So if you're curious about that, uh, let me know in the comments and then I can add that. But just to give you a perspective, this is what we're trying to achieve. So I'm going to go ahead and create this feature. So I'll go ahead and create a sketch. Now, <laughs> this is a scenario where you can get into trouble if you use the origin. Most of the time for the eye features is not a problem if you use the projected origin point, but this will be because I'm actually going to create a secondary sketch. And if I reference that point, it'll cause all kinds of problems in the flat pattern. So we'll go ahead and create a point and then we'll create the geometry that we want. So this is going to be, oops, whole, diameter and then we can apply a couple of additional circles like so and then like so okay so we'll apply this is going to be that flat pattern diameter so that's going to be that what we're going to rep on the flat pattern and then this one is simply just the thickness we're going to straight up extrude that as a ring so we'll list the parameters and that will be the thickness parameter. There we have it. So again, because we're not centering the shape, you have to be comfortable with there being two dimensions yet to be used. And we'll go ahead and finish this sketch. So it's a relatively simple feature. We're gonna cut out both of these, hit okay. We'll have to share the sketch, which is fine. And then we're gonna use an old school extrude to create this shape. So I just want this ring, and instead of one inch tall, we could of course come over here and that's gonna be our ring height. All right, now I'm measuring that from this top surface. So if you're measuring it differently, you would have to of course take into account the thickness of the plate. So that will be the basics of the shape. I'm not going to add fillets. And if you want to know why, take a look at my Autodesk University class on eye features. I've listed it uh, in the description below because it means you have to make extra selections. So I don't want to do that, so I'm going to leave it be. All right, 
So the, the next part is we want to represent the flat shape because this will not flatten. So what we can do is create a second sketch and here's the big tip. We can project this geometry. And by projecting that geometry, now we're going to be able to utilize a secondary sketch to represent the flat pattern. So I go ahead and hit OK. Quick tip, you do need to set that point also as a center format. So the projected point needs to be a center format as well. You can finish that sketch. So we don't need to see the sketch anymore. We can turn off the visibility. So that's our feature. That's going to be the sketch. And if you want, we could even clear out in this sketch, we could even delete. Whoops. Uh oh, I missed it. Uh -huh. Could even delete that point altogether. Okay. So again, it's not, we don't need it. That makes it a little bit cleaner sketch there. You don't have to do this next part, but it could be easier later on if you come back and you wanted to add additional sizes, do one offs. I'm going to call this the flat pattern sketch just to make it a little bit easier for the selections later. Cool. Now, I forgot to do this earlier, but of course we should save this. So we would save this inside of our base model. So again, I mentioned that a lot in the sheet metal or the iFeature AU class. So I'm not going to go over it again, but we'll call this feral base model. Oh dear. There we go. All right. So now that we've done that, we can now go ahead and publish this I feature. So I'm going to extract this. I'm going to pick the cut and the extrusion. We're going to save this as a sheet metal punch. And I want to give it a simplified representation. So we can say, grab the sketch and we're gonna pick the flat pattern sketch. So that's what they're gonna see in the flat. Other things we could do, we could rename this. So we could say feral um, feature. Could give it an ID if you wanted to as well. Feral 10 DIA, and on this, you know, whatever. We could, we could play with this and do different type of stuff. But uh, we'll just call it feral feature. There we go. So keep it simple. Uh, of course, we could, I covered a lot of that stuff in the AU class. I'll stop mentioning it. But uh, we could do other things in here too. But we'll, we'll call this good. We'll save it. And I'm going to save it in my local workspace. And there it's going to automatically take on that name of Feral Feature. So I go ahead and save that. Awesome sauce. Now we'll go ahead and start up a sample part. Go ahead and create a sketch make it uh, plenty big so that we could add a few of these if we needed to face it awesome so whoops come on now there we go all right so we'll go ahead and create another sketch we'll just throw a few of these on here it's a pretty big plate so of course you would lovingly position those where they needed to be but we're kind of going through it quick here so I go to my workspace, find that punch. There's my feral feature, hit open, boom. So of course we could play with all sorts of stuff here, change it, blah, blah, blah. One quick thing, you can ask it to represent it in different ways, but ultimately it's gonna depend on the flat itself. So we hit finish, there is the feature. Now if we had applied fillets, you would have to go back here and pick this back face. So yeah, that's why I don't bother with that. It's good enough. And now we create the flat pattern and we're like, wow, boo. <laughs> if you notice it didn't seem to do anything. So that's where we have to come over here, edit the flat pattern. And you could use sheet metal rules to manage this as well. But we want to represent that as a 2D punch and center mark, apply it. You're like, it keeps flipping it around. What in the world? That's where you can come over here, create different orientations if you want, or flip it. And there you have the final shape. So if we take a quick peek at this, we'll go measure it. You can see that it is indeed the reduced size. 
So you could export this as a DXF, et cetera, et cetera. There's different things you could do, but this is a way that you could take a more complex shape like this ferrule and you could represent it with the 2D sketch for cutting, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and have a blessed day.